What's up guys, Chandler from Podium One Racing and today we're gonna talk about the Moza R9 direct drive wheelbase. Let's get into it. Alright guys, I'm teed up at Road Atlanta in the Audi R8 LMS, one of my favorite cars on my favorite tracks, I know it well, and so I thought it'd be perfect to test the Moza R9 direct drive wheelbase out on. So a couple things that I want to note uh, before we get on track and go through some of these capabilities uh, that the R9 has is Moza's Quick Connect system. We love it. Compared to SimiCube Pro 2 that I've been using, the SimiCube system, you kind of got to jam the wheel on and fit it right and then put the pin in and it's just not as efficient as the Moza collar with the ball bearings and then their pins which push in and made up with the direct drive wheel, uh, the base, sorry. Um, and so look, it's just, it's just as easy as this. You pull the collar back, you push it on, snaps in, and then now uh, you've got a cool little RGB LED display on the wheel, lets you know it's connected. Um, the second thing that I want to talk about before we get on track would be the Moza Racing Pit House. The software is incredible, super efficient, super quick. It noticed the wheel the second I put it on. SimiCube is a little bit annoying. You put a wheel on, you made it to the, uh, the wheelbase, then you have to hold both paddles, make sure it's connected. Sometimes you got to double clip, click and manually connect it. Then you got to load your profile and it's an extra 30 seconds to a minute and a half every time you want to race to make sure your wheel's set up, you got the right feedback settings, etc. cetera. Moza saves all the settings and notices the connection of the wheel and uh, wheelbase and pedals instantaneously. And so here's the homepage of Moza Pit House. It shows me what wheel I have. I can even hover over, this is so cool. I can hover over the paddles and the clutches and it highlights them. I can hover over the buttons, click them. It's, it's super cool. They did a great job with the software. Um, I can go to the wheel settings, I have basic settings like your steering angle, sensitivity, feedback intensity, mechanical back to center strength is great, which means if I turn the wheel, it's not going to re return to center. Now if I turn return back to center at 100, it's going to move that thing back. Now of course, I'm in a car on road, and so much like in real life, when you turn the wheel, you'll get a little bit of uh, pull back to center, but it's not going to perfectly straighten out, but at least has that fight back in the wheel to return to center, which helps. Uh, when you're unwinding, coming off an apex on track. Um, you have advanced settings as well, like stiffness, wheel inertia, mechanical friction, etc. Um, I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to turn back to center at 80%. My wheel settings are fine. I'm not using Moza pedals right now. I'm using the Asetek Fortes, which I have been using on my personal rig for a while. I love them. So we're going to keep those where they're at, and we're going to jump on track. Now a couple things I want you guys to keep note of, which is force feedback strength. This is a nine newton meter wheelbase, so we're gonna have feedback at nine newton meters. I like a really heavy wheel. Like I said, I use the SimiCube Pro 2, which is a 25 newton meter wheelbase, and I run that thing heavy. So for me, I wanna max this out. I'm gonna do a lap or two on nine newton meters, and then I'm gonna do a lap or two on say 11 or 12 newton meters, and then up to 15. And I wanna show you what happens when the feedback clips, and you can see that on the meter here, the lowest bar on this little tiny black box will show uh, yellow, orange, then red when it's clipping. And what that means is, say the average uh, torque that you're running through this wheel is seven Newton meters, but going through turn 12 at Road Atlanta, when you're going at 120, 130 miles an hour and you're fighting past the apex and you have a lot of force in the wheel, the nine Newton meters is not gonna be able to to, it's only going to be able to do that, just nine. It's not going to be able to go to 12, 13 at its max. That is its max. We're running as max. We shouldn't clip at nine because that shows that our max is going to be 9.1. However, if I'm running 15 newton meters, I'm going to have an average higher of torque in the wheel, so it's going to feel heavier to me. But when I get to those, again, those turns like turn 12 at Road Atlanta, this wheel is going to lose a little bit of fidelity and a little bit of power in it because it's capped at nine, if that makes sense. And we'll kind of talk through that while we're on track. So. Like I said, Road Atlanta, Audi R8 LMS. We got cold tires, so we're gonna take it a little bit easy on this first lap. Admit admittedly, I'm used to 25 Newton meters of torque, and so for me, nine Newton meters at its current settings feels really light to me. 
But what you do have compared to say a Fanatec CSL or especially like a Logitech, which has like, you know, in my opinion, no force feedback. I think they claim up to five. Uh, I'll have to check on that. Is I do have a lot of fidelity in the wheel. Obviously instantaneous response, smoothness. I can feel some bumps in the road. I can feel when I hit the rumble strips. I can feel a little bit of traction loss. But I like that effect to be as much as possible without me uh, having sore biceps an hour into a race. But keep in, keep in mind to watch this meter here, the bottom meter that's kind of, uh, as I'm turning the car, you'll see that meter jump up. That's how much force is being applied through the wheelbase. So we clipped a little bit there on the rumble strip, but not much. I'm not gonna notice that in the wheel. I didn't notice that in the, in the wheel. Turn 12, and we're good. We didn't clip once in turn 12. So I'm gonna crank my feedback now to 13. Turn one is a high torque turn for the wheelbase. We did clip a couple times, but I didn't really notice it in the wheel. A little off track there. Jump in the uh, apex. So you can see I'm fighting the wheels in some of these tight turns. Find the wheel rather. Turn seven, going back on the straight here. So far, so good. 12.6 is what I'm at in terms of Newton meters and the wheelbase is doing a phenomenal job keeping up. Like I said, plenty of fidelity, plenty of force being applied. And at each lap as I turn this up, it's gonna feel a little bit more realistic and what I want. Now, some of the feedback settings could be subjective. Right? Some people like light wheels, some people like heavy. However, keep in mind when you're sim racing, there's no inertia. There's no G-forces to let you know how fast you're going, traction loss, etc. And all of that force comes from the wheel. That's why it's so important to have a wheelbase that can show you the bumps, the cracks in the road, traction loss, regaining traction. So right now you can see as I go through the S's, I'm clipping and I can feel a little bit of loss of torque in the wheel when it clips, which is not ideal, but I'm at 15 right now, which is 5.6, 15.6, 5.6 Newton meters more than the wheels rated for the base. I could feel traction loss in the wheel, a little vibrations. It feels good. I probably would run this wheelbase at 15.6 if I'm using it on the daily and I'm jumping into races. Again, I do lose fidelity and I do lose torque on some of the more intense turns when I've got it turned up this high. However, when I'm going around turn nine here going into 10A, when I won't be clipping, even though I did it just once there as you hit the rumble strips. Now I do notice when it's clipping, I lose the vibration in the wheel. And I'll notice it right here. But at 15.6 Newton meters, this wheelbase actually feels very strong. I'm fighting the wheel through turns. If I hit a bump uh, or a sausage in a turn, I can feel the counter steer as I would in real life, as I would in my Semi-Q Pro 2. Um, again, the only downside to a nine Newton meter uh, direct drive is that you do lose that top end when you wanna be fighting a wheel, especially the open wheel cars like F1, or the skippy cars, um, or the Mazdas where you have to have that torque turned up, you're gonna lose a little bit of that fidelity and that heaviness. However, my thoughts on this wheelbase, having using it for a little bit last night, using it now, um, you can't beat it for the price. It is an entry level direct drive wheelbase, but it performs like a mid-level uh, direct drive wheelbase. You know, at, at roughly $500, we've got it listed for $549 with shipping. Um, you can't you can't beat it. The thing's durable. It doesn't get hot. I think we've got a fan system in the back, um, and so this thing is is seems to be a durable piece of hardware. We're going to put it to the test over the coming weeks and do some endurance races and and see what this thing can do over a long period of time. 
but again, super, super happy with the Moza R9 direct drive wheelbase. Incredibly uh, happy with their GS wheel. It's my favorite wheel so far that we've tested. We want to try the F1 wheel. We're going to be doing a lot more videos on the Moza products, the digital dash display, uh, their pedals, etc. So if you have any questions at all, please drop them in the comments here in this YouTube video. Check us out on Instagram, which is Podium One Racing. Um, you can find us at PodiumOneRacing.com, and we hope to see you on track. Oh,